Ferrari, Lamborghini, Bugatti, Koenigsegg, Rimac, and Pagani. What do all of their names have in common? It's pretty simple. Each of those manufacturers, as well as many others, take their names from their founders' surnames. Some even combine two of their founders' surnames, like Rolls Royce. But some manufacturers in particular have some much stranger, or at least interesting, stories behind how they got their names, and I'm going to tell you all about some of them in this video. So without further ado, let's get into it. <laughs> Let's start with the least satisfying one, Lotus, because it remains an unsolved mystery of the car world. Company founder Colin Chapman never actually clearly shared why the brand was called Lotus, though many myths exist, referring of course to the flower or to his wife Hazel's decision to name the brand as his business partner, or my favourite myth, Colin used to say us lot quite often, so he flipped it around to make the name for his brand. None of those have been verified, and the only people who could have verified it, Colin or Hazel, have both passed away so that mystery will probably remain unsolved. Worth also mentioning, the fact that most Lotus's names start with an E came completely by chance, as Colin named his early cars Mark 1, Mark 2, Mark 3, etc, written in Roman numerals, but journalists like saying Lotus 1, Lotus 2, Lotus 3. When it came to Lotus number 11, which looks a lot like the Roman numeral for 2, Colin scrapped the mark and wrote out the word 11, which set a precedent for all future cars to be named with an E. Another sporty British brand, TVR, which is one of my favourite stories behind the name. The founder was called Trevor Wilkinson, and TVR is just an abbreviation of his first name. Completely against the grain of normal car brand names at the time and since, classic TVR. Originally in 1913, Aston Martin were called Bamford and Martin, named after the two founders, and they sold cars from a different manufacturer, Singer's Cars. It's disputed whether one of their cars won the 1914 Aston Hill climb, though it likely did, and when Bamford retired from the company in 1920, Martin wanted a posher name for the organisation and named it after that hill climb to capitalise on their success. So a little hill climb in Buckinghamshire is the name of one of the most recognisable luxury car manufacturers in the world. As Audi was called Auto Union for a time with multiple organisations involved, after a few buyouts it could no longer use its original name, meaning founder August Horsch had to think of another name. Audi comes from the Latin for listen, which loosely related to August's surname Horsch, if you translate it into German, but it also refers to the Auto Union as Audiator et altera pars in Latin translates to listen to the other side, which is a common term in law. Jaguar used to be called Swallow Sidecars, abbreviated to SS. In 1945, they changed the name to Jaguar. Can you guess why? Well, if you know your World War II history, the SS were responsible for some pretty horrendous atrocities during the war, and Swallow Sidecars wanted to move away from having the letter SS attributed to anything they produced, which is perfectly reasonable. They chose Jaguar as, and I quote, Unlike SS, the name Jaguar is distinctive and cannot be connected or confused with any similar foreign name, said Chairman William. Lions. Subaru, or Subaru as it's said in Japanese, is a sort of double meaning for the brand. On the one hand, it was a coming together of six organisations, and the word signifies unite in Japanese. On the other hand, it's the Japanese name for a cluster of stars in the Taurus constellation known here as Pleiades. Or Pleiades? I don't know. I don't know anything about stars, but I do know stuff about cars, so make sure you hit the like button if you haven't already. Juijiro Matsushida was the founder of Mazda, and by chance, his surname doesn't sound too dissimilar to Mazda. There is method to this madness, of course, as Ahura Mazda is an ancient god from ancient Persian mythology, and they believe that he was the creator of everything good, which of course is a nice ethos to have behind your brand. Like Audi, Volvo takes its name from the Latin word, in this case Volvir, which translates to I roll. This references Volvo's parent company being at the forefront of ball bearing design, as well as the simple fact that revolutions are very important in vehicles. Jeep is one that more people at least know half the story to. The original Willis was a general purpose vehicle, or GP for short, which doesn't take a huge leap to get to Jeep. However, it's not just that, as that Willis was often referred to as Peep, because it was used for reconnaissance and surveillance in military purposes. Therefore, the name Jeep fit nicely for both of those reasons. Henry Leyland founded Cadillac Cars and chose the name based on the surname of the French army officer that founded the entire of Detroit, 
the Motor City in the US. I'll give you a two on this one as well, as the same man founded Lincoln Cars after the president that he actually voted for all the way back in the late 1800s. Nice and easy for Hyundai, it means of the present age and modernity in Korean. So if you drive a Kia Picanto, you are driving a modernity Picanto, apparently. Originally, Nissan was called Nippon Sangyo, which translates from Japanese to English to mean Japan Industries. They wanted to choose a name that Westerners like me wouldn't butcher, so switched it out by taking the NI and San to make Nissan. Simple as that. So this one is kind of like all the brands I mentioned in the intro. Toyota's founder's name is Sakichi Toyoda. A while after they started the Toyota brand, they ran a competition to choose a better sounding name, which funnily enough ended up being Toyota. The choice of this as a name was likely helped by the fact that it's written with eight strokes in katakana, and eight is a lucky number in Japanese culture. You'll probably know this one already, but VW of course stands for Volkswagen, which is German for people's car. Ferdinand Porsche gave the company its name as he wanted to develop cars that more people could access than the luxury and sports cars that had been available for wealthier families for some time. Of course, there is some sketchy history here too, but we won't go into that. On to the final one now, Daewoo, whose founder named the company after the Korean word for great house or great universe. So like the Kia, if you drive a Matiz, it's a great universe Matiz. What an interesting set of stories, at least in my opinion. Huge thanks to the patrons for making it possible, and let me know in the comments if I've missed any. But now that you've got this information, you probably want to know some of the stories behind these manufacturers' badges. So to hear them, click here, and make sure you get those two videos every single week by subscribing by clicking right here.